This episode is brought to you by IVP. Would you like to connect with scripture in a fresh and life-giving way? The founders of Alabaster have collaborated with IVP to present the full text of all four Gospels and the Psalms alongside beautiful, full-color photographs, thoughtful design, and guided meditations. And as a listener of this podcast, you can receive any of these titles for 25% off when you use the promo code IVPOD25. That's IVPOD25 at IVPress.com. This is IVP. Listening to Get in the Word with Truth Table. Your word is truth, your word is life. Presented by Innervar City Press. Your word is truth, your word is life. The Daily Audio Bible Podcast, read by Dr. Christina Edmondson and Akemeni Uwan. Let's get in the Word, and may the Word get in us. Open our eyes that we may behold wonderful things in your Word. Old Testament reading, Numbers chapter 1. Organizing the census of the Israelites. Now the Lord spoke to Moses in the tent of meeting in the desert of Sinai on the first day of the second month of the second year after the Israelites departed from the land of Egypt. He said, Take a census of the entire Israelite community by their clans and families, counting the name of every individual male. You and Aaron are to number all in Israel who can serve in the army, those who are twenty years old or older, by their divisions. And to help you, there is to be a man from each tribe, each man the head of his family. Now these are the names of the men who are to help you. From Reuben, Elazor, son of Shedor. From Simeon, Shemuel, son of Zorashadai. From Judah, Nashon, son of Amenadab. From Ishakar, Nathaniel, son of Zuar. From Zebulun, Eliab, son of Helon. From the sons of Joseph. From Ephraim, Elishama, son of Amenahud. From Manasseh, Gamaliel, son of Petazor. From Benjamin, Abaddon, son of Gideoni. From Dan, Ahaziar, son of Mishadai. From Asher, Pegiel, son of Akran. From Gad, Eliasaph, son of Deul. From Naphtali, Ahira, son of Enan. The census of the tribes. These were the ones chosen from the community, leaders of their ancestral tribes. They were the heads of the thousands of Israel. So Moses and Aaron took these men who had been mentioned specifically by name, and they assembled the entire community together on the first day of the second month. Then the people recorded their ancestry by their clans and families, and the men who were 20 years old or older were listed by name individually, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. And so he numbered them in the desert of Sinai. And they were as follows, the descendants of Reuben, the firstborn son of Israel, according to the records of their clans and families. All the males, 20 years old or older, who could serve in the army were listed by name individually. Those of them who were numbered from the tribe of Reuben were 46,500. From the descendants of Simeon, according to the records of their clans and families, all the males, numbered of them 20 years old or older, who could serve in the army were listed by name individually. Those of them who were numbered from the tribe of Simeon were 59,300. From the descendants of Gad, according to the records of their clans and families, all the males, 20 years old or older, who could serve in the army, were listed by name. Those of them who were numbered from the tribe of Gad were 45,650. 
from the descendants of Judah, according to the records of their clans and families, all the males twenty years old or older, who could serve in the army were listed by name. Those of them who were numbered from the tribe of Judah were 74,600. From the descendants of Issachar, according to the records of their clans and families, all the males twenty years or older who could serve in the army were listed by name. Those of them who were numbered from the tribe of Issachar were 54,400. From the descendants of Zebulun, according to the records of their clans and families, all the males twenty years old or older could serve in the army were listed by name. Those of them who were numbered from the tribe of Zebulun were 57,400. From the sons of Joseph, from the descendants of Ephraim, according to the records of their clans and families, all the males twenty years old or older who could serve in the army were listed by name. Those of them who were numbered from the tribe of Ephraim were 40,500. From the descendants of Manasseh, according to the records of their clans and families, all the males twenty years old or older who could serve in the army were listed by name. Those of them who were numbered from the tribe of Manasseh were 32,200. From the descendants of Benjamin, according to the records of their clans and families, all the males twenty years old or older who could serve in the army were listed by name. Those of them who were numbered from the tribe of Benjamin were 35,400. From the descendants of Dan, according to the records of their clans and families, all the males twenty years old or older who could serve in the army were listed by name. Those of them who were numbered from the tribe of Dan were 62,700. From the descendants of Asher, according to the records of their clans and families, all the males twenty years old or older who could serve in the army were listed by name. Those of them who were numbered from the tribe of Asher were 41,500. From the descendants of Naphtali, according to the records of their clans and families, all the males, twenty years old or older, who could serve in the army, were listed by name. Those of them who were numbered from the tribe of Naphtali were 53,400. These were the men whom Moses and Aaron numbered along with the twelve leaders of Israel, each of whom was from his own family. All the Israelites who were twenty years old or older, who could serve in Israel's army, were numbered according to their families. And all those numbered totaled 603,550. The Exemption of the Levites But the Levites, according to the tribe of their fathers, were not numbered among them. The Lord had said to Moses, Only the tribe of Levi you must not number or count with the other Israelites, but appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of the testimony, over all its furnishings, and over everything in it. They must carry the tabernacle and all its furnishings, and they must attend to it and camp around it. Whenever the tabernacle is to move, the Levites must take it down. And whenever the tabernacle is to be reassembled, the Levites must set it up. Any unauthorized person who approaches it must be killed. The Israelites will camp according to their divisions, each man in his camp, and each man by his standard. But the Levites must camp around the tabernacle of the testimony so that the Lord's anger will not fall on the Israelite community. The Levites are responsible for the care of the tabernacle of the testimony. The Israelites did according to all the Lord commanded Moses. That is what they did. New Testament reading. Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through 38. Workers for the Harvest. Then Jesus went throughout all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every kind of disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were bewildered and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest-ready fields. Matthew chapter 13 verses 53 through 58. Rejection at Nazareth. Now when Jesus finished these parables, he moved on from there. Then he came to his hometown and began to teach the people in their synagogue. They were astonished and said, Where did this man get such wisdom and miraculous powers? Isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother named Mary? And aren't his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? And aren't all his sisters here with us? 
So where did he get all this? And so they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and in his own house. And he did not do many miracles there because of their unbelief. Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. Rejection at Nazareth. Now Jesus left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue. Many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where did he get these ideas? And what is this wisdom that has been given to him? What are these miracles that are done through his hands? Isn't this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, Joses, Judas, and Simon? And aren't his sisters here with us? And so they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown, and among his relatives, and in his own house. He was not able to do a miracle there, except to lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed because of their unbelief. Then he went around among the villages and taught, sending out the twelve apostles. Jesus called the twelve and began to send them out two by two. He gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, and to put on sandals, but not to wear two tunics. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the area. If a place will not welcome you or listen to you as you go out from there, shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and preached that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed many sick people with olive oil and healed them. This is the word of God for the people of God. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us go boldly to God's throne of grace. Gracious and merciful God. There are times we look at and experience some of these passages, O Lord, and we are reminded that you are the God of the miraculous and the mundane and that details matter. Details matter. The the specificity that we saw in numbers that every name was listed in. And we must admit, O Lord, that when we work through these names, I know that I certainly stumble could only imagine if you had decided to include in the text 50,000 of those names listed, O Lord. God, you you care about each name, and each name has a purpose. And we're reminded, O Lord, that you are building your kingdom. You are building a kingdom not built on warfare, but building a kingdom on peace and love and mercy and holiness and righteousness, O God. We thank you, O Lord, for the apostles, the ministry that you put in them, that went forth and produced the church that we have today. We thank you that you have been working through complicated and flawed people for a very, very long time. And we entrust ourselves to you as one of those complicated and flawed people to see, O God, what the end will be, how you will work in and through us throughout our lives and throughout today. Thank you, O God that you are a God of intentionality and that you know every name and that you call us by name and that you call us out to do the work of the kingdom. In Christ's name we pray, amen. We pray this time of getting the word with Truth Table has encouraged us all to not only be hearers of God's word, but doers. Share your reflections on these scriptures with us on Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag get in the word and hashtag Truth's Table. Saints, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Go with God. Get in the Word with Truth's Table is a production of InterVarsity Press. For 75 years, IVP has created and published resources that deepen lives for Christ to engage the university, church, and the world. Visit ivpress.com for more information. Our Bible reading plan is from BibleStudyTogether.com, and the Bible version is the new English translation used by permission. Sound engineering is from Pottery Studios, and our executive producer is Helen Lee. 